we're going to have a look at some things to do with boats. Now, uh, there's some things again that I don't agree. I come from another background and I've visited a lot of places, especially around Europe. And I see some things over there and I don't see them here in Australia. I see some great things here in Australia I don't see in Europe. Why can't we have something that it just brings it all together we get the best out of everything? I don't know. Anyway, we are talking to someone that is an expert about marine engineering. Let's have a look. I have with me Joe, and Joe is an expert in marine engineering. Hi, Joe. Hi, how are you going, Harry? Uh, over the years, I've worked in boat construction, restoration, refit, design, and engineering. Can you give us some examples of some boats that you have restored over the years? I've probably done well in excess of 500 boat restorations and refits and built over 100 brand new boats over a 25 year career. Um, here's a few examples of some of the boats that I've done. This is a mid 1950s Halverson timber cruiser. We had to go through a full restoration process on the boat, stripping it right the way down, rescrewing every plank, making sure that the structural integrity was there and then reinstating a, a good finish on the boat so that would be minimal uh, maintenance for the owner going forward. Uh, this is a Sea Ray 30 Sundancer. Everything was all old and worn out and needed a very good, a lot of cleaning, a lot of restoration work. The upholstery needed to be cleaned up and, and made serviceable again. We turned the whole boat around in just on two months time and basically turned it from being something old and tired to a brand new vessel again. Okay, now one of my problems is the marinas here in Australia, especially in Sydney. I think in Melbourne, have a look at some of the pictures you see now from Melbourne and also from, uh, from Brisbane. And what happens in those marinas and, the, and a lot of other marinas that have been around the world, even in Turkey or Greece or Italy or Spain, they have what we call, I think you call it a break wall. Now, how come here in Australia we have a very expensive marinas but we still don't have a break wall? Now, you're looking at a video that we took at one of probably the most expensive marinas in Australia, and that's the Rascades Bay Marina in Sydney, Dalbora Marina, and have a look how the boats are just moving up and down. And you know what it was? A little boat, a little, a little teeny just went past it. It was about four meters, I think. So can you please explain that to us, Joe? Yes. In Australia, we have a lot of government departments and bureaucracy that get involved in environmental planning and they make determinations about the conditions and the construction conditions for marinas. Unfortunately, a lot of them don't actually identify the, the key issues at the marinas, and they don't use any foresight to mitigate the environmental conditions that actually occur on the boats. We have a lot of waves, we have swell, we have wind conditions. There is no breaks for any of those things. You go to other nations in the world, yeah. And they've come up with engineered solutions to all of these problems. They can't see past a basic environmental issue, but they're creating bigger problems down the line just because of lack of forethought and foreplanning. Okay, now one other uh, issue that I have is basically the, uh, the moorings. Uh, we have here the, what do we call them? I think they call the swing moorings. Yes, swing moorings, which is just a basic apparatus, a concrete or steel block on the bottom with a chain that allows the boat to swing through 360 degrees on an open mooring. Okay, now can we explain here that if you actually want to have your own mooring, you have to apply to the MSB, to the RMS now? Yeah, that's correct, yes. What's the apparatus? It's just a block of concrete or steel of a specific size to be able to take your boat so you don't lift it off the bottom a piece of chain, a bit of rope and a yellow buoy on it yep. which identifies your mooring. It'll have a number specified for your particular boat and you tie your vessel to that which allows it to swing through 360 degrees. Who owns the apparatus? You have to pay for the apparatus. You also are supposed to pay for annual servicing of that apparatus uh, to be able to meet your uh, insurance liability risks. Okay. So basically the apparatus that's holding your boat, it's owned by you. But you are leasing from the RMS the space to put your boat in there. The waterways of Australia and the Crown have taken it upon themselves to take control over all navigatable waterways in Australia and you have to pay for the privilege of using not land space but actually paying for the privilege of parking your boat and occupying a piece of water. 
Okay. Now, when we just go around, we see a lot of boats that they've just been there neglected for many, many years. Uh, I think they're called uh, mooring minders. Is that right? Yes. Uh, we have a range of vessels and a range of different usage. And unfortunately, 80% of boats on the harbour and all around Australia actually uh, don't leave the mooring more than once a year. And that's usually just to get a slip and an anti-foul and put back in the water. People have lost the time to go and use their boats and they just sit there as a mooring minder. Uh, and the average usage of all boats in Australia combined averages out to about 27 hours a year across all different usage types. Okay. Now, and it's also 23 days per year for the whole uh, boat. It's, you're, what you're talking about is the engine. Now, I, I, just, I just don't understand one thing. We have these mooring minders that people actually buy some old boat. They're putting there on the mooring because the mooring, it's in their name, they can keep it with the dream that one day they might get a bigger boat and they have the mooring because there is a waiting list for these moorings sometimes in some places for 15 years. I think in Rose Bay in Sydney, it's 18 years. And you have to be on the list for 18 years, and maybe that's the first person that will get it on the list. If you're number 20 on the list, you might have to wait for 25 years. And for me, this is not acceptable. And there's other ways. I mean, we can find solutions to solve that problem. But I think that the government, it's just like they're burying their heads in the sun. There is a system that we've seen around the world. You can sit down on your screen. It looks like a cross, but you can put eight boards in that. Joe, is there a problem why we cannot use this system here in Australia? The biggest limiting factor is getting the waterways to actually open their minds to the possibilities of alternatives to the, to the issue. So there is a solution, but uh, it's just that the government department doesn't really want to know about it. But the problem still remains that you cannot really get a board and get a mooring for yourself. You have to either get it to a marina or in a place just away from the, the centre of the Sydney Harbour. Is that correct? That's correct. I wonder if we could just use some direct democracy here and ask the people, what do they think? Well, should we just have this type of moorings instead of the normal swing uh, moorings that we have now? Well, since we're talking about uh, people power and people... <laughs>